Hey guys, good morning. Just do a top down here, global macro. I want to start with the dollar. Uh, you know, we're still bullish here, both long term and intermediate term. Um, all right, so we're, we're playing along here, and you can see how these bands are starting to fan out. That's bullish, right? So this is the daily chart. We got above these highs. We closed the week above these highs. That's all bullish long term. Now he has some resistance here right in front of 99 that the markets, I mean, coming into yesterday and the day before, we're pretty overbought. But like I touched on on the uh, trade the open session yesterday, just because something's overbought doesn't mean it's a short, right? Ideally, you want to be long taking profits into these highs. So I'm actually not as long as I'd like to be. Otherwise, I would have sold. I only have one piece left. So I'm really holding this to see if we can test par. But we have this resistance here from earlier in the year. <clears throat> and then the highs from February is really 99.95. And then this uh, par level. But this, you know, we get a pullback here. It makes sense to rebuy on the um, over the intermediate term. So this hourly, as this cycle comes back lower, you can see we were pretty overbought two days ago, and now that's being relieved. Um, I did short some euro this morning, and I'm happy to do that if the euro backs up even more. So I want to be a buyer now. This, this purple line is basically the old resistance that's now going to be support. And you can see that we pushed through it. You bounced off it twice, really three times. So if we get another deeper pullback into this area, then I'm going to rebuy dollar futures. All right, that's the game plan there. And then, you know, I like playing a dollar long and a uh, gold long against each other. And so we're long gold right now. <clears throat> After we broke 1310, the market got pretty oversold from a price pers perspective. Um, this was a nice dip to buy here at the bottom of the cycle. And then we took a little bit of gains here as we moved back up high within the four hour cycle. But I still think, you know, we're making higher highs now. You're above the bands on the four hour. So there's still a lot of room to retest. Probably the underside of this big 1308, 1310 area. You can see that pie on the four hours back here also. So we want to stay long gold. You know, if you do get a significant knockdown, I'm going to bring up my long exposure and just add to it. Let's look at the Euro. I mean, I kind of touched on it, but I've been saying for a couple of weeks now, we're breaking down longer term. We were oversold again earlier in the week. Or I guess that was last week. All right, so you can see here's my covers. All right. Cover. We're covering on this flush. And this is all part of our core short position that we established back here. All right. And we sold more here. So as we come back up on the top of the cycle up here, I want to be a seller again and I want to sell even more back at these bands and I'm not really going to worry about this a move back to 111 or 112 unless we violate this pivot high right here so call that 110 and a half right I think that's uh, that should put dollar features back on the same place that we'd want to get more long <clears throat> Um, a couple other things. There's some new positions here that I haven't really touched on. So let's look at the peso. Okay, so from a longer term perspective, dollar peso. Peso has been very weak long term. All right, this weekly cycle has come a long way. So it's time to start thinking the other way. If you look at the daily. All right, every time we got back towards the 200, we've held. And now I would actually be a buyer all the way here back towards pi. But this 18 level is going to be key to lows from August. 
and I'm not even sure we'll get that deep. So we see this green line. Guys, this green line is the 8. And what we want to see is this actually start to curl back up. All right. So we're not quite there yet. But within the sine curve, you know, you want to start nibbling down here and then get a little bit more aggressive on this side. So I call this the left-hand side of the chart. And this is the right-hand side of the chart. So right now, we're still maybe a little bit early, but I've been buying here, here, and I just bought more this morning. All right, so what that looks like on the hourlies looks pretty good. All right, so now we're, this is pretty bullish. If we get above this high here, 118.17, I think there's a lot of room to run. All right, and then you'd have to be get above these bands here. It's all around this 18.7, 18.7 area. We get above there though, I think you can run back to 19, back up into the 200 here, it's 19.15 or 19.20 or so. All right, but I'm playing along just out of the money there. I expect this to go in the money, and this is my third entry. So typically, I enter in three to five rounds. All right, South African ran. I don't have a huge opinion here. It's pretty neutral to me. I think we might get this thing to roll over, but I'm such a dollar bull that this is pretty neutral to me. Um, so I'm a small short, but that's not really anything exciting. Euro pound, as you guys know, I'm starting to build a, a long-term core short. And let's go to the four hour. All right, we sold into this pop, was it yesterday? Yeah. So I'm still willing to sell higher. I think we're going to see long term. This is a good. This is a good candidate for the for the top. So you can see we keep making lower highs now, and I kind of expect that to continue. So I'm trying to play this range like this. All right. So I'll be a seller back here at point nine again. And I don't. I'm not going to stop. I mean, I took a big piece here. And I had to take it off up here just because I was worried about a move all the way back towards these. They call it, you know, when the pound had that 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 crash of a move lower. So I played defense there. We came back down, and now I'm putting that same chunk back on, just doing it incrementally. So sometimes when you get aggressive, it's okay to stop, go to the sideline, and look for a place to get back in. All right, so that's the game plan there. If we get a move back here to 0.9, I want to resell euro pound. Um, we'll just cover dollar yen. Dollar yen, I'm still waiting for this break above 104.5, 105. I don't know if we're going to get it. We seem to just be going sideways. The longer we base underneath it, the more the chance I think there is that this thing goes. Um, I think just on positioning alone, the yen was so strong that I think there's a lot of people late to the party that were thinking this thing's going to break 100, their long yen. I'm not so sure. The first move might be back to 1.7, even 112 first. And again, that kind of coincides with our long, our uh, bullish dollar view. All right, and dollar cad's the same thing. Dollar looks strong here. I'm trying to, it's break, it's broken above these resistance. We're long, you know. I'm just looking for spots to add. I haven't really gotten one yet. This hourly is too high. I want a deeper dip. Um, and then the Aussie, the Aussie's just kind of grinding higher. I haven't been trading it much at all. It's pretty boring to me, but I think overall, I'm just not convinced that this story in commodities is over. So, 
I don't know. It's tough for me to get bullish the Aussie unless we get all the way back above these highs here from earlier in the year. So I'm not really trading this one. It's just kind of been a boring trade. Now we are pretty. Sh we were pretty short euro versus New Zealand dollar, and now we're getting some bounces back here. We're start thinking the short side again. Um, might not be a bad place to add there. See how we've all fanned down here, the bands. These upper bands are up here around 153.28. So I'm going to be a seller back there. I might have to work it patiently. Um, if you guys see that, that this is one, oops. You guys can see that this is one big move down, right? One bearish move about halfway. I mean, I'd be a seller all the way back here towards pi. Longer term, I just don't think we're going to get back above 155. So that's currently where my average short is from because we've been working this thing for a while. And I've covered a lot down here. So I'm uh, just going to be patient there. I might put some more out, though, today. All right, guys, that pretty much sums it up. Hey, if you're new to these videos or my company, um, my firm's Jenkins Risk Management. The website's JenkinsRM.com. And we have a free chat room. You're welcome to join the team. That's a group of global traders, both independent and professional. And then, uh, you know, visit the site also. We have an active trader service. It's, it's really, it's probably one of the cheapest real-time alert services out there for the high-level professional stuff that you get. Um, 149 bucks a month. It's worth probably a couple dozen trades a day, both day trade and swing trade um, across all our asset classes. And then I would encourage you just to sign up, join us in the live room Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tomorrow morning will be the next trading session I do. Um, so visit the site. You'll get a pop-up to join the chat room and send me a message. Uh, I'm Jason Jenkins or go ahead and just uh, um, you can fill out the trade the open information section on our website and we'll get you in the room for the morning. But that's pretty much it guys on uh, currencies.